<sighs> Need a video idea. Do a restoration on some of the antique scrap you got. Eh, yeah, alright. G'day internet, and welcome to another episode of Morgan Makes. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name's Morgan, and today I'm going to be restoring some antique electrical switches. Well, I've already done one of them. I did this a while ago. I am an electrician after all. I've done this before. Um, you know, that's that's a previous attempt. But today I've got this really old, very clunky 500 volt 15 amp isolator from the Electric Control and Engineering Limited Australia. It says Rolex right there on the front. Fancy. Let's take it apart, see what we can do. So to start, here is a close-up shot of the switch in all its dirty glory. This thing has been a part of my collection for a few years now, and God only knows how long it was installed in some factory or warehouse somewhere. I think it came from out near Parramatta somewhere. You can see that it was just cut out of wherever it was a part of. No one took the time to do it properly. They probably assumed that no one would go through all the effort of trying to restore it. Well, that's where I come in. Mind you, it would still probably work as is. That switch action feels really solid, but there's a lot of rust that I'd like to deal with, and it needs a new coat of paint. And I really don't trust that earth wire all that much either. No one knows the last time this thing was opened, and that seal is really stuck. Gonna need the screwdriver to help pry this off. And there we go, we got it open. That vulcanized rubber seal between the two metal parts has seen better days. It's kind of a little bit deca decayed, um, but we can bring that back. I've got a method to restore that, but we'll get around to that in a minute. I think I got lucky on this one. There's no spiders or anything hiding inside. However, they did leave a lot of the old conductors in there. And they really pushed up against the mechanism too. They're going to be a little bit of a hassle to remove. But we'll get there. That's what we're here for. Also a good shot of the switch action lever in motion. You can see how that spring pulls it over, pulls that little bar over to the heel and yeah, locks everything in position. It's a simple, elegant design. I like it. I'm very excited about this one. Okay, now we've got the old wires out. Make sure we don't lose any of these screws. We're going to need to keep all of these. We'll deal with this earth lead and you know, get rid of that. It's That's garbage. It's not, that, that one's never coming back. I'm going to replace that little part wholesale. And it's always important to test your work at every stage of the operation. None of the changes that we've made has damaged the mechanical motion in any way, so we're fit to continue. So we'll just undo the two little mounting screws there underneath the armature and remove that whole mounting block part. Excellent. So you can see here that all parts of the mechanical motion are responsible from that spring. The middle armature mounting block part has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's just along for the ride. The contacts on the armature actually look fairly clean. I doubt this thing was switched on and off that too many times during its lifetime. Maybe it very rarely saw power at all. Who knows? But we need to make sure that we replace our missing screw before we lose it. And all the old wires can just be scrapped. Recycle. New copper. And like I said, I will have to replace that earthing lug. It does need it. But for the moment, we're just going to put the earthing screw back in its home. And that's the first part of it dismantled. We've got a really good close-up shot of the faceplate here. Still have absolutely no idea what Rolex means in this regard. I think it was actually made before Rolex, the watch company, got big. So, you know, it may even stand for the same thing. Who knows? But before we get to cleaning, we've got to get the rest of the parts dismantled. And we need the big screwdriver to undo that screw that's holding that spring in place. And hope it doesn't go flying across the room because I'm probably never going to find it again. And with the tension off the spring, we can just slide that off the bar and remove it. Then we can deal with removing the screw and we'll get to removing the rest of it. And I did do some research on the Electric Control and Engineering Limited Company of Australia. Just trying to find out what the word Rolex actually means in this regard. And there is precious little information available online at the moment for this particular thing. Um, yeah, the, the most that I managed to get was that they went out of business on the 13th to the 12th in 1956. So they haven't been a thing for a long, long time. But if you happen to know what it means, leave a comment, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that little metal cap removed off the end of the switch, we can now reveal the hidden engineering involved here. You'll notice that the switch handle part actually rotates freely, and there's a small split pin that interfaces with those two little lugs there. And that gives it a yeah, little bit of mechanical lag and freeness. It's a real neat trick. However, once we take the pin out, everything just falls apart. It was holding the whole thing together, as it should. The only two parts that I couldn't get apart was the little copper tube and the outer casing. Um, that's just going to stay there for the entirety of the video. I'll tape it up when I get to painting it. 
And I'm just having a quick inspection of the inside of the enclosure, make sure that, you know, it's still sound and it looks sound. It's, it's a very solid piece of metal, this. Well, it's stripped down as far as I can get it. Let's get the cleaning. And for cleaning cast iron pieces like this, I recommend an extra strong vinegar solution. You just let it, let it soak in there for a little bit and scrub it every now and then. I'll just pour a healthy amount in there and let it sit. Come back in an hour and give it an attack with the toothbrush. Okay, and now it's an hour later. Let's give it an attack with the toothbrush. I'm just using a soft bristle toothbrush to just loosen up some of the dirt and the rust there on the surface. And get the vinegar absorbed into that first layer of cast iron there. And then we'll seal it back up and we'll come do the same thing again in six hours. And that's what it looks like after six hours. Mind you, this process stinks and it's messy and it takes a long time. We'll just give it a little bit of a scrub and a bath and set it back in the vinegar and let it soak for another 24 hours. And then we'll come do that one final time and then we'll get the paint stripper. Oh yeah, that's nice and clean now. All we gotta do now is worry about the paint. And to attack the paint, I have a can of paint stripper from the hardware store. Good old hardware store. I've already done a test batch, so I know that this works. We'll put on the gloves and we'll get to doing it. Just got a cheap brush because the brush isn't going to survive this. I'm also wearing my big filter mask in this too. Yeah, you think the vinegar stinks. Well, this stuff really stinks and it's bad for you. Vinegar is just vinegar. All right, so we just give it a good coating, let it sit for three minutes and then rub it off with some paper towels. Some of the paint proved to be more stubborn than other areas, so we had to do several treatments. But eventually we got the surface back to bare metal. I'm very happy with the result. Let's move on to the rest of it. I'm using the paintbrush to dap all the paint stripper right into the lettering so I can get all the paint out of all the little nooks and crannies. This side took several treatments as well just to make sure that I had everything out from in the letters. Stripping the paint off this side of the faceplate was actually the hardest part of this entire process. The, all the little tiny details need to be cleaned individually. I ended up getting Q-tips just to make sure that I got all the stuff out. And now the mounting block side. While not as difficult as the faceplate, it also proved very tricky because it's got this nice you know, dish shape that allows every, all the electrical components to sit inside it. Well, all the paint needed to come out of there too, so I had to get in there. Then once everything was stripped, I gave it a quick rinse in another new vinegar solution. And we're going to let it sit in vinegar solution for another 24 hours just to make sure that we got all of the paint stripper off and all of the rust and oxidization off from the surface of the cast iron. You know, anything that may have been hidden under the paint there. So once I was finally satisfied with my effort on the base plate there, we went straight into a fresh vinegar bath. And there we stayed for another 24 hours. And remember how I said that this process stinks and that vinegar is just vinegar? Well, with all the paint stripped off and all that bare metal exposed, we're now producing oxygen, which is explosive. So don't let it build up anyway. I'd only wish I'd managed to get the shot of exploding the off-gasses. Oh, next time maybe. Dulux Metal Shield Hammered Finish in a charcoal metallic. This is my go-to paint of choice for this project. You know, the original was likely electroplated, but we're not going for industrial applications, we're going for my applications. So, this'll do. And you can try and make the joke about nice thin coats here, but this stuff doesn't go on thin. You just gotta try and put it on as neatly as possible and not fill in your detail. And we'll just take these inside somewhere nice and safe out of the wind to dry, so we don't get bugs or leaves drying on the paint. Hey, aren't you forgetting something? Where's the footage of you cleaning all the internal components? <sighs> I lost it. It's gone. Well, now what are we supposed to do? Hey, man, would you get off my case? For a figment of my imagination, you're a real pain. Thank you. And so now it's time to put it all back together. I'm going to start with the earthing lug and make a new one of those. Seeing as how I lost the footage of me restoring all these internal components, I may as well just tell you about it. The rubber seal that I said that was a little bit degraded, I ended up restoring that just by bathing it in some sewing machine oil. It's a really lightweight oil that managed to seep in and revitalize that vulcanized rubber there. Just going to throw that screw in there and poke that wire through there. Just how it was when we found it. I did clean all the screws as well, they were just bathed in some contact cleaner as well as the armature device, so they should all be good for another 50 or so years. Now I've got to get the spring lever arm back together so we can have that mechanical action back. Honestly the tricky part about all this was remembering where everything lined up when it took it apart the first time. 
Um, yeah, I got it back together on the first try. Ask anyone. And we're just going to fast forward through some of the boring parts here. Putting this pin back in was a little bit trickier than I thought, but we got it in and look at that, the mechanical action works. Love that snapping sound. Then we've got to put that little cap back to stop the split pin from going anywhere. If it's gone, none of it works. I feel like I need to apologise for my book head getting in the way of all these shots here, but I was working with the camera over my shoulder, there wasn't a lot of room to manoeuvre. Apparently Shade here's the mailman, so I guess she's going to go check the mail. This little piece of cardboard likely contains asbestos or something similar. It's there to increase the electrical resistance of any exposed piece of metal between the mounting block and the terminal block. And with that piece mounted, it's almost finished. Every action still works and it looks just as good as it when it rolled off the shelf 70 something years ago. The only thing left to do now is to close it all up. Ah, it's finally finished, and looks pretty good. It could probably pass for new old stock. I don't think I could be more happy with the finished product. I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet. It's probably going to go into a project later on, but, you know, keep, keep watching and find out. Like and subscribe. Well, that does it for this video. I had a great deal of fun making this project. I, I always love doing this stuff. You know, that's why I became an electrician, is to do this type of thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Like and subscribe. My name's been Morgan. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Oh, bye-bye.